Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com New Jersey Invitational, brought to you by Ultimate Guard. I am Nick Miller alongside Esper Professor Shaheen Sarani. How you doing? Fantastic. Now we saw you at the Pro Tour not talking about Esper cards. It's a sad day. Well, it was a sad day. But it was actually a joyous day because I came with Esper. I came with Black Green. Uh, we tested the heck out of Esper. The team loved it. Craig loved it. Dan loved it. Fennell loved it. And we realized that maybe the deck the deck strength was more because of the experience I've had with playing Esper and maybe not because the deck quality was very high. Uh, so we were a little scared to pull the trigger there and then actually play this deck. So we went with the team black green deck that I brought as well, which is much more comfortable in their realm. But I, I think this is a fantastic deck. Joe Lissette, who was on my team uh, for the Pro Tour Grumpy Old Men, he also thinks that this deck was good so much so he's playing it today and he's doing pretty well with it today. Right. Uh, so a lot of the team is still holding on to this Esper deck and this is pretty much the shell from the Pro Tour. All right, well the Esper deck is here. We're going to talk about it. We're not talking about Delirium. Well, you got some Delirium. There. Yeah, there's a little but delirium. we're not talking about Black Green Delirium. No, no, we're no. talking about Esper through and through. Yes. The Shaheen way, yep. you've got five Planeswalkers in this deck. I do. I <laughs> Take do. us through them. We got Jace, Liliana, Narset, Objects, the Sora. Well, if you have the Oath of Jace, you might as well have the variety, right? Sure. You want to get your Scry 5 on. I haven't done the Scry <laughs> 5 yet. You got the Scry 3 earlier, but not the Scry 5. Uh, Jace Rings Prodigy is a card I was stubborn on when I first started uh, analyzing the set and building this initial Esper uh, because I wanted to go no creatures, but you just can't go no creatures because the card is too good. And this is a card that's too powerful to avoid. Um, I had to take inventory in that slot, but you have so much upside with Jason flipping it that you just have to conclude in all the control builds. Um, Liliana is a card that I knew from the get-go is just fantastic. It's a three-man planeswalker. What more do you want from it? Exactly. It does a lot of things, a lot of words on it, and it costs three. It's going to be in the decks from now on, from the from now until the end of uh, its standard uh, time. So, fantastic card, and you have to play one, even though you're not playing a lot of creatures, because in case Emrakul is discarded early on from Oath of Jace or Jace Friends Prodigy, you need to be able to bring it back. And Liliana is your one out to do so. Ultimate ain't bad either, and that happens more than people think. Yeah, actually, and I thought the last ability when I first saw it, I knew the first two were good. I thought the last ability was like, yeah, it's a pipe dream, it's not going to happen. But it happens very easily because there's not a lot of ruinous paths. The world is not safe for ruinous path right now. It's terrible against bank company. It's terrible against humans. It's terrible against anything that isn't the mirror or some really, really slow sluggish mid-range deck. So when there's no ruinous path, Planeswalker stock increases, and that's why I think the Planeswalker is a good way to go today. We'll make week. sure we don't mention your uh, ruinous path in this All right, there's only one. There's okay. only one. And that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a card where I thought it was going to be a stock 3-4 of in the new format. Uh, it turned out sorceries are bad in this format early on. Later you play your expensive ones, but in the early turns you need to be able to interact with Spell Queller, and, and Ruinous Path is probably the worst card to align with Spell Queller removal spell-wise. So. Right. Well, I've been talking with Joe, and he's made some changes too. He said you guys didn't like Narset. Right. Now, Narset is still here, so clearly she has earned her spot. Right. Uh, so when we don't like it, some remove, I double down, okay? <laughs> so I agree. Narset in a lot of situations has been pretty bad. It's a card where on turn four against Spell Queller, three man up, it's a little bit embarrassing. Um, I found that with the dragons that I had in the original build that Joe is still uh, using, it was even worse. When I cut the dragons, Narset actually performed fairly well. It's the glue that holds the deck together. It's, right. You have your turn three Oath of Jace to make sure your land's coming to play untapped, which has been a phenomenal card. And I was dead wrong about it. It's probably been good for a long time. Uh, Ali played two copies. Yes. When I saw him playing, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> no, 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 don't let the secrets out. And luckily it's the only plane too. Yep. I had four in all my initial builds of new uh, new Esper because it allows you to hit your land drops. Picture why people play Jace Friends Prodigy. They want to get an activation or two to hit land drops. This gives you a triple activation right off the bat. Upside later in the game. Delirium in the graveyard for Emrakul. It does it all. So this into Narset has allowed for some pretty good starts. Sure. Uh, Narset's not fantastic. If you want to play this deck and you're not big on Narset, that's completely understandable. But I'm very comfortable with the card. I've been playing with it for a long time. So uh, my experience with the card has made it a little bit better performing for me personally. Right. And you just got some card drawers and some killers in the form of Obnixus and Soren there. Yep. I just cranked the number of Sorens up was the only change I made. Soren as, as a two of now uh, to make sure that if it's a scar early on or uh, something happens to it, you have another one to fall back on. All right. When you think control, you think counter spells and removal. No counter spells in this deck, but a ton of removal. Right. Languish, Ruinous Path, Ultimate Price, Anguish Unmaking, Grasp of Darkness, all here. Yep. Descend Upon the Sinful as well. Yep. 
Tony, you just sweet. gotta kill everything. Yeah, I, at, at the beginning we had no answer at all, so I would dark petition, and then I would frantically say, oh God, Languish, I didn't even kill these two Sylvan Advocates. Uh, I'm getting beat down by these cards. They have a Woodland Bellower out. They have, well, just, you can just name a bunch of threats that are played, especially in the green decks, uh, Elder Deep Fiends or Mind Menders or whatever they are. You need an answer on control. Control thrives on having options. And if you don't have an option to kill everything on the board, you're lacking. So the double white mana cost normally would be alarming, but with cards like Oath of Jace and cards like Jace Friends Prodigy, you're able to filter two to get the double white. And you don't need it on six. You sure. need it on seven, eight, nine. Later in the game, just have it floating in your deck to be able to tutor, um, and it's better. And, and back to the no counter spells, you know? If they print a playable counter spell, I'd play it. Okay? <laughs> and I just, I'm waiting for one. It's called Spell Queller. Spell Queller, yeah. yeah. It's putting it on a creature again. I even like when they printed Essence Scatter, I'm like, yes, Essence Scatter. And then they made it three mana. Made it unplayable. I mean, we've been playing a long time, so the viewers, I'm sure, have been playing for a couple years at least. When you think Essence Scatter is too good at two, control is a dark day for control. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> we got Dark Petition here to find all the goodies, transgresses, your disruption. But then, of course, you've, you've got Emrakul in here and a coax from the Blind Eternities here to find the Emrakul in your sideboard. That started off as a joke. Uh, Chris Vanell was uh, playing around with it, adding it to the list, um, saying that it's good against Transgress. I thought he was kidding. Um, and he was actually serious. And I actually, uh, on Facebook, uh, before this tournament, before the invitation, I said, you were right, dot, dot, dot. And he already knew, <laughs> he already knew exactly what it was. It, it's just a, such a great card against the control mirror and against the mid-range decks that have transgressed. Because once you get transgressed and you're Emrakul list and they have Emrakul still, there's such a huge disadvantage. So Coax allows you to do that. And it gets you to play, I get to play my pet Eldrazi in the sideboard also, which is another big right. reason why. Little Fathom Feeder. Fathom Feeder, Whew. love Fathom Feeder. It's great. I guess you do have one counter spell in your main deck in the form of Salumgar Scorn. But that card's doing a lot of things. Right, it's the best counter spell against Bant Company. Uh, being able to pass turn and then the cast company and then countering and killing is just phenomenal. I'm playing against humans last round, was able to bounce a creature with uh, the equipment on it that when it becomes unattached, they have to sacrifice it and give another creature minus three, minus three. So I was able to do a lot of cool things with it. It's a card that's super versatile and I really like having it in the deck. All right. Take us to the sideboard here. More removal spells. We have some negates and actual counter spells here. The best here. counter spell format. Duress. <laughs> Summary dismissal here. I've seen someone counter an Emrakul with this, yep. and it can't feel good from the other side. It's the dream. It's the reason why you have it in the sideboard. I also pack uh, two uh, infinite obliterations as insurance. But Summary Dismissal I like a lot because it's not only a counter spell that just blasts Emrakul out of the water, but it's also just a fine mirror match card or control mirror card. It's not a four-man counter spell seems terrible, but in a format where there's no counter wars, it's, it's not too bad. And I actually had a confirmed suspicions for a while because I just love to get people. <laughs> and this is actually the, the only get you card that we get to play from the counter spell side. So it's a fine card. Right, when it, but in a world where everyone's emerging Eldrazi that have cast triggers, the card gains a lot of value. Absolutely. Descended Mindbender is a card that you want to be able just to shatter and get rid of. Um, surprisingly enough, Descended Mindbender is one of the cards that I've actually been able to persevere through pretty easily, uh, even when they cast it. Uh, usually later in the game and the decks I build have this real top-heavy curves, so it doesn't really blow me out too much. But having an option to be able to kill your sacrifice creature, counter your, your, your spell that you emerge through, it's just a, it's a free, free one in the yeah. sideboard. So. Not bad. Yep. You got uh, Dragon Lord Salumgar in here and some Kalidas's as well. Yep, yep. Kalidas is great. Uh, it's a it's a auto include in, uh, control decks. Being able to uh, handle pri prize and algums and all these like graveyard based cards, you have to be able to deal with them, be able to exile them, and uh, it gets even better now because you have to play the 20 removal spells, no counter spells. So it's just a free one. So yeah, the the sideboard is heavy hate on the creatures. Yeah. What are the decks that are giving you problems with this, or do you think you have it finally tuned in a spot where you're really well positioned in the format? I like my matchups against most decks. Uh, I thought the burn matchup would be a little rough, the one with Fever Division, sure. the blue-red deck, but they just died Emrakul. Emrakul is the, the savior of the control decks in standard. You Before, you would just sit here with your Planeswalkers, and eventually you, you would gain control of the board, but it's a loose control, and then they would take it right back from you. It would burn you out. They'd rip a couple companies in a row. They'd draw a Duskwatch Recruiter, draw 40 cards. But now with Emrakul, they can't do that to you. Even Evolutionary Leap, a card that they have a, a killer against control, drawing cards, making the board unwinnable, hanger back walker, all these things, Emrakul beats you. So Emrakul is the reason why control is now uh, like risen above 
uh, the 50-50 the realm and then actually has some favorable matchups. I guess the only matchup like I would be a, a little bit afraid of is a control mirror where uh, like black white when they have Gideons and other planeswalkers as well. Those are slightly dangerous, but beside that, I think the deck's well positioned. All right, well you heard it here. You and Joe are doing very well with this deck in the standard portion of the tournament. Yeah. So hope to see you later on crushing it as yep. usual. Appreciate Thanks it. for joining me here on the sideboard. Yep. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in New Jersey.